With the Summer Olympics in Tokyo now in full swing, after being postponed from last year due to the coronavirus pandemic, sports fans are, from all over the world have been engrossed in watching and cheering on athletes of all descriptions, competing to see who is the best in the world. And I thought I'd share a few fascinating facts about the Olympics, which you may not be aware of. The original Olympic Games, staged in ancient Greece at Olympia, ran from 776 BC until 392 AD, and were held, like today, every four years, in conjunction with a festival to honour the Greek god Zeus. And originally, all wars in the region had to have a ceasefire during the Games as they were held to honour Zeus. And the only woman allowed was the priestess of Demeter, and she was the only married woman allowed to watch the ancient games, with any others who were being caught being thrown over a cliff. A bit harsh. The Roman Emperor Theodosius abolished the Olympics in 392 AD in an attempt to rid his empire of paganism in favour of the widespread adoption of Christianity. And it took another 1503 years before the Olympics were to return. Organised by Baron Pierre de Coubertin, who formed the International Olympic Committee, the IOC, and the modern Olympics were born. And the first city to be awarded the honour of staging the Games was Athen, Athens in 1896. Very fitting. And Baron Pierre de Coubertin, founder of the modern Olympic movement, designed the five ring symbol. He specifically chose the different colours, blue, green, yellow, black and red, because at least one of those colours appeared on all the national flags of the world. And the Olympic motto is made up of three Latin words, Sitius, Altius, Fortius. These words mean faster, higher and stronger, and it expresses the aspirations of the Olympic movement, not only in its athletic and technical sense, but also from a moral and educational perspective. And it was coined by Father Henri Didon, who was a close friend of Baron Pierre de Coubertin. And only five countries have been represented at every modern era Summer Olympic Games. They are Greece, Great Britain, France, Switzerland and Australia. And the sports themselves have changed over the years. And many sports such as tug of war, the standing broad jump, the standing high jump, underwater swimming and croquet the last of which was attended by just one fan, are no longer included, but they have included lots of new ones like BMX and surfing. And the original games in 1896 held a race to commemorate a Greek soldier, Pheidippides, who ran 25 miles from Marathon to Athens to let them know of the Athenians' success against a Persian invasion. And that started the modern marathon race. In the 1896 games, football was to be included, but there were no teams to play the event, so it was dropped. Cricket was last in the Games in 1900, and only two countries entered, Britain and France, and they took gold and silver, respectively. And at the ancient Olympics, the only prize awarded was the crown of olive leaves and sprigs called a kotinos, cut from the sacred tree at Olympia. And what counted most of all was the fame and supreme glory of becoming an Olympic victor, embodying the concept of arete, or excellence. And the IOC gives the privilege of hosting the Games to a city, not to the country. And the host city designs the Olympic medals for their Games. Each must be at least 60 millimetres in diameter and 3 millimetres thick. The gold medals must be covered in 6 grams of gold and the silver medals must contain at least 92.5% of silver. And in the advent of the modern Olympic Games, gold, silver and bronze medals were all awarded to the top three competitors in each event. The 1900 Paris Olympics is the only summer games in which the shape of the medal was actually rectangular rather than round. Designed by Frederick Vernon, the obverse of the medals showed a winged goddess holding a laurel branch in her hands with the city of Paris and the monuments of the Universal Exhibition serving as the, the backdrop. And the reverse depicted an athlete standing on a podium, striking a victorious pose while holding a laurel branch in his hand before a stadium and the Acropolis of Athens. And despite the popular belief that the gold medal is composed of pure gold, this hasn't been the case since the 1912 Olympics. In fact, the 2020 Tokyo Games are the first in the history of the Olympics 
in which the medals were made of recycled materials and they're the ones that are being handed out today. The medals in Tokyo are made from 80,000 tonnes of recycled electronics and the Tokyo Games gold medal weighs about 556 grams which means an Olympic medal, if it were made of pure gold, would cost close to £25,000 based on current market prices. And London holds the record of being the only city to have hosted the event three times, in 1908, in 1948 and in 2012. And the London Games in 1908 saw the first opening ceremony. And in the opening ceremony, the athletes' procession had to be led by the Greeks and it ends with the host team, with all the others going in alphabetical order as labelled by the host country's language. And only three modern Olympic Games have been cancelled. The Games were cancelled due to World War I in 1916 and World War II in 1940 and 1944. In 1924, in Chamonix, uh, France, the first Winter Games were held and only two people have ever won gold medals during the summer and the Winter Olympics, one for figure skating and one for boxing. The longest standing Olympic record is held by Bob Bierman, who won the long jump in the 1968 Olympic Games in Mexico. And his superhuman leap registered a remarkable 8.9 metres to become an Olympic record, which to this day stands in the competition. And Greg Rutherford, another Olympic champion, said of his iconic jump, it was a special jump back then and it's a special jump right now. And disabled athletes participated in the main Olympic Games before the Paralympic Games were introduced in 1960 in Rome. And amongst the most inspiring of such athletes was an American George Iser, the first person with a prosthetic leg to compete at the Olympic Games. Isa had lost most of his left leg in an accident in his childhood and he, he wore a wooden leg. And he took part in the gymnastics event in the 1904 St Louis Olympics and he won three gold medals in the space of a single day. And he won three more medals to end his tally at six. The youngest Olympian in the modern era is Greek gymnast Dimitrios Londras who competed in the 1896 Athens Olympics at the age of 10. And at age 13, springboard diver Marjorie Gestring is the youngest female individual gold medalist in history, while 14-year-old Kusio Kitamuru, for swimming, is the youngest male individual gold medalist. But you know, it's not all hyper-competitiveness and winning at all costs. At the 1936, the infamous 1936 Berlin Olympics, American pole vaulter Bill Sefton took the gold in the pole vault event. But two Japanese athletes, Shui Nishidi and Shui Oe, were tied for second place, same, same time, they, same height. They were asked to compete in a tiebreaker. However, they refused and they decided to share one half of the silver and bronze medals between them. They cut the medals in half and fused one half of the silver with that of the bronze to make what is now today known as the Medals of Friendship. And what we're seeing this summer is the result of many years of athletes' total dedication to their chosen sport. At this level, training is a full-time job, and athletes rearrange their lives to accommodate it. They move to where the best training facilities are. They follow special diets. They wear appropriate gear. They religiously follow their coaches' orders, and they put up with the pain and strain of rigorous practice. And an Olympic athlete's entire life narrows to the single objective of going for the gold medal. And this makes me wonder, should we as Christians be any less committed in our pursuit of Jesus? In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, who surely knew about the ancient games in Olympia in Greece, compares following Christ to a race several times in his letters. 1 Corinthians 9 reads like an athletic rule book. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. Run in such a way as to get that prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Paul continues this metaphor in Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. 
He says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And again in 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. And I think that following Christ deserves more discipline and single-minded focus and actually training for the Olympics. And the goal is more than a medal and the pride of one's country. It's the glory of God and the eternal rewards of heaven. And the Summer Olympics are always a special time. This year we've seen so many emotional moments and compelling stories coming out of the Games. But in the Rio Olympics, there was an example of two runners competing against one another and yet standing together, which stands out to me as the most significant example of sportsmanship and kindness that there could have been. During the women's 5,000 metre race, about 3,000 metres in, the American runner, Abby Dagnostino, accidentally clipped New Zealand runner, Nikki Hamblin's heel, and the two runners went sprawling to the ground in a tangled heap. Now, usually, the runners would spring up as quickly as possible and continue with the race. But instead, Abby and Nikki, both elite athletes, shared a beautifully beautiful moment together. Abby got up from the track and immediately went to Nikki to make sure she was OK. And after helping Nikki to her feet, Abby started to race again, but quickly realised her knee had been injured in the fall. And that's when Nikki turned to help her competitor. She went to Abby, helping her continue the race and urging her not to give up. And Nikki said of the moment Abby came to her aid, I'm so grateful for Abby for doing that for me. I mean, that girl is the Olympic spirit right there. Now, Abby wasn't sure she could finish the race, so she urged Nikki to go ahead without her. And Nikki did go on, and then she waited at the finish line for Abby to complete the race. And Abby pushed through her injury and met Nikki at the finish line, where the two shared a very special embrace. The two runners ended up finishing in the last place, but the Olympic Committee was so moved by their actions that they granted them entrance into the final due to their special circumstances. And as I watched the video of these two special athletes, I was reminded of another kind of love that I read about every time I open my Bible. A love that is so great that God would send his own son to earth, not just to feel my pain in his human form, but to die on a cross, so that I wouldn't have to bear the weight of my own sin. And just as the two athletes helped each other, so too Jesus takes the weight off of my shoulders and onto his own, releasing me to run with perseverance, the race marked out for me, fixing my eyes on Jesus, the perfecter of faith, as he supports by each and every step. And God's love for us was sacrificial, and he calls us to do the same. So take heart. No natural talent is required to excel in living out your faith. And there's nothing stopping any of us from being top athletes in multiple sports. You can go for the gold in caring for the elderly, raising children to follow Christ, witnessing in your workplace, faithful tithing, giving to help refugees, volunteering in a homeless shelter, leading a small group at your church, mentoring a young person, befriending an immigrant family, and always conducting your business affairs with honesty. Doing it all with a clear motivation of sharing the good news of God's love, so that the world will see the hope we have in Jesus Christ, the King of glory, who guarantees a crown that lasts forever. God bless you all. Amen.